I want to talk about positive work versus negative work. First of all, positive work. So when work is positive, now that's just plusive, short form for positive, okay? When work is positive, really means that you're giving energy to something. So what do you suppose work being negative is? Taking away, yeah, taking away energy, why not? Okay, and of course we can give energy and we can take away energy. So this makes total sense. We can have positive energy and negative energy. And before we get into a calculation problem, if I have something working with me to get me going faster and faster and faster, is that positive energy or negative energy? Is it working with me? Is it giving me energy? Probably. That's probably going to be my positive energy. If I, have, if I have some initial speed, like let's say that I started off with uh, some velocity, you know, I'm, I'm drawing it in red here, but some velocity equal to like, I don't know, 100 meters per second. And I've got a force acting against me. What's going to happen to my speed? I'm gonna, yeah, it's going to decrease. It's going to go down. I'm going to slow down. So is that force going to be giving me positive energy or is it going to be doing or giving me negative energy? Yeah, my change in energy is going to be negative. So I'd say that somebody's doing negative work against me. Or in other words, it's taking energy away from me. Okay, so it's possible to have this positive work and negative work. I want to do a question that, that might involve that sort of thing. And you guys have actually seen this sort of stuff in the dynamics unit, but we didn't talk about it in this way before. Okay, like we've had forces working for us and forces working against us. So here's an example. Let's do a hockey puck. This hockey puck's going to slide along the, the ice. Ice. For 50 meters. And we'll just say 50 meters to the right. It has a mass of, I don't know, what's a good mass for our fictitious hockey puck? Make it, let's make it an enormous hockey puck, probably more like a, a curling stone. Let's make it like uh, 10 kilograms, okay? Just nice round values, that's the only reason I'm choosing it. 10 kilograms. And the ice has a coefficient of uh, 0 0.5. Five. Let's make it a coefficient of friction of 0 0.5. Coefficient of kinetic friction, I should say. Should say. Zero point five zero zero. Let's keep it nice round numbers. I'm going to take the sheet away in a minute, but I want to draw the free body diagram before I do so that we have it sort of set up. So we've got our, our puck, and it may have its initial velocity to the right, because that's what its displacement direction is going to be. But the force, all the while, is going to be against it, because that's what friction does. It works against your motion. It's a reactive force. So we've got our normal force and our gravitational force, and while we might be starting going forward, friction is going to slowly bring us to a stop. So we could say that the work done by friction might be something, or might take on the form something like this when we put it into an equation, would be work equals, same old equation, force times delta D times cosine of theta 
we can plug in our values. We've got our givens. Well, do we have our givens yet? What do we have to calculate? I should say. Yeah, for, force due to friction. We haven't even calculated that. We want to know how much work is done by friction. We haven't calculated FK yet. Let's, so let's do just a quick aside. FK is equal to mu K times F normal. And mu K was 0 0.5. And the normal force we're going to have to calculate, well, normal force will be equal but opposite to the force due to gravity. So uh, if force due to gravity is 10 times 9.81, force due to gravity is 98.1 newtons. And so normal force, equal but opposite, since we're on a horizontal surface here and no angled applied forces, is also going to be 98.1 newtons in magnitude, but upwards. So 0 0.5 times 98.1 newtons, oops, 0.1 newtons, was that 49.05? I think so. 49.05 newtons. Wait, how did you get that? Uh, 0 0.5 times 98.1 uh, is 49.05. And the 98.1 came from the Fg being the downward force and the normal force being equal but opposite in this case because there's no angled applied forces or anything like that. Okay. All right. So coming back to our work calculation. We've said that kinetic friction is 49.05 newtons. We've been told that our displacement is 50 meters. Well, that's an interesting thing. Do we have to define positives here? Let's take a look at the picture. We, we're not finished the equation yet. Cosine of theta. Well, what's theta this time between the displacement vector and the force vector? Are they in the same direction? No, I don't think so. One's pointing this way, and the other one is pointing this way. If you have two arrows pointing in opposite directions, what's the angle between them? It's not zero. 180. 180 degrees. So we've got cosine of 180 degrees. Now here's where it gets a little bit interesting. What's cosine of 180 degrees? Try it in your calculator. What do you get? Yeah, I bet. I bet every single time, as long as you're in degrees mode, you're going to get negative 1. Okay? And that's where your negative sign gets introduced. So we don't even have to think about positive negative reference frames here, because the cosine theta takes care of it for us, which is actually kind of nice, right? So we can say 49.05 times 50. And can somebody help me out with that calculation? I, I think it's going to be somewhere around 1900, but I can't do it in my head. Oh no, I messed up my math. I'm sorry. What what is the value? Yeah. Negative two thousand four hundred fifty-two point five. Negative two thousand four hundred fifty-two point five. Yeah. All right. And what are the units? Joules. Joules. Sweet. All right. Now we can round this off to three sig figs, and you'll get two thousand four hundred fifty. So we can throw that in there just now. How come it's negative? Well, because we have mathematically, it's because we have cosine of 180 degrees. But going back to what we said just a minute ago about what positive and negative work means, did the friction give you energy or take away your energy? Probably took away energy, right? So there's a reason there. There's a conceptual reason and there's a mathematical reason, and they they, they both fit together. But all right, let's try another one. <coughs> 